prop spending up. We need to do that in a temporary way, otherwise the recession would have been deeper and would have taken longer to get out of. That spending will go away in a couple of years. We'll still be faced with a very significant long-term deficit problem, but it's important to separate the Recovery Act from that. You know, at the center we've looked at our long-term deficit gap, and we have a significant problem there, but the Recovery Act will account for only 3% of that long-term fiscal gap. What's really driving it are rising health care costs, changing demographics, we're getting older, and the tax cuts that were enacted in 2001 and 2003, if they're made permanent, most of them are likely to be. They're, those tax cuts account for a much larger share of the long-term deficit problem than does the Recovery Act. And it would have been foolish to ignore the current recession um, because we were worried about making the long-term deficit just slightly worse. So a slide just to reiterate that point, the very thin slice there uh, is the Recovery Act. We did this analysis just before it passed, so um, we were looking at roughly $800 billion. It's still 3% if you look at the $787 billion that the Recovery Act actually was. Now let's talk about how the Recovery Act worked. So the Recovery Act was really very well designed to boost consumer and government spending at that crucial point in the first half of last year when we were snowballing the wrong direction. If you look along with the state fiscal aid at the, direct, the aid that went directly to individuals, those two pieces of the Recovery Act, really, really, they were really designed to be the, at the forefront of stopping that collapse that we were seeing. And even as of the end of the year, those two pieces, direct, direct, uh, direct aid to individuals, including the Making More Pay tax credit, and the state fiscal aid, account for two-thirds of all of the spending in the Recovery Act. So let me talk about those two pieces, direct aid to individuals and state fiscal aid. With the direct aid, here I'm thinking primarily about five major provisions. Two uh, unemployment benefit increases. One, what, one of those uh, increased the benefits of uh, unemployment recipients uh, by $25 a week. Another allowed unemployment recipients to get benefits for a little, for longer uh, than they otherwise would have. Uh, there's also uh, a food stamp increase and uh, a making work pay tax credit, which went to almost all American workers uh, through a chain, through a reduction in their withholding. Uh, so, the, so their paychecks were higher as a result of the credit. And finally, uh, it, what's called the economic recovery payments. These were one-time $250 payments to Social Security recipients, SSI recipients, and some others. So those are five provisions, just five provisions of the Act. Um, as of this past Thanksgiving, those five provisions had pumped $80 billion, $80 billion into uh, the pockets of American consumers. And in Pennsylvania, <laughs> the total as of uh, Thanksgiving was over $4 billion. Over $4 billion gone, has gone directly to consumers in Pennsylvania through those five provisions. And I'll show you another informative slide to reiterate that point. <laughs> those provisions were effective in stopping the collapse of uh, of, 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 of spending and the economic down, the tr the, that snowball effect I was talking about for two main reasons. One, they used existing efficient mechanisms to get the money out quickly. So if you look at the extra $25 in uh, UI benefits, workers were getting, unemployed workers were getting that extra $25 a week by the end of February. The president signed the bill on February 17th last year. By the end of the month, 
workers across the country were already getting an extra $25 uh, in, their, in their unemployment benefits. The Making Work Pay tax credit, the IRS changed the withholding tables on February 21st, four days after the president signed the act, businesses quick, were quick to change their own withholding tables. Uh, by March, in March, uh, the Making Work Pay tax credit was putting about a half billion dollars a week, a half billion dollars a week into the paychecks of American workers. And by April, uh, that total had reached nearly a billion dollars a week it was going into the paychecks of American workers uh, through that one provision.